Hello, quilt marketeers. My name is Linda Warren. I want to thank you for coming all this way to see my co-video home movie to show you how to show your customers to machine piece perfect circles easily and accurately with the learning curve. <clears throat> so here's, a, here's what my demo board looks like. Method one, two, three, four, five, and six. Reading across, so these are the, all the units the learning curve makes. And they go together in all different combinations. For example, the circle block. This unit is what I'm gonna demo today. So at the end of this video, I have my learning curve demo demo, so you'll know what to do. And this is the little unit we'll make. And you can see four of those will go into the circle block. <clears throat> um, there are five patterns that go with the learning curve. This is the curvy piece border pattern. So a curvy border is one of the most popular things to do with the ruler for people who don't necessarily see themselves making circles. Over the moon and dotty are the two most beginner patterns. Both make great classes. Um, this uses method one, which I'm demoing today, and this uses method two, both just as easy. Those are dotty and over the moon. And the newest patterns <clears throat> are also the highest in demand um, in re by request. Moonlighting, which is method two and five, and well-rounded, which are methods three and six. Okay, so I'll run through that video, that demo. <clears throat> Here's the ruler and the insert. <clears throat> Excuse me. The insert that comes with the ruler shows about 13 different blocks and borders that you can make. It has tips and instructions. Very clear and easy to read for the six methods. So this looks just like the demo board, basically. Um, and we're doing method one today. Here are the steps shown, laid out for method one. You'll always start with oversized squares and rectangles. You can cut them in stacks. You'll put the learning curve with the A line on the edge of the stack to cut the curve in method one. And when you do, you get your pieces, two sets, light and dark, and dark and light. Now all of these are cut oversized so that you can use free form curve piecing. You don't have to sew the curve perfectly. You just do the best you can and that will be good enough. <clears throat> Helpful hints to make uh, that work for you is to um, use a slow speed on your machine, small stitch length, and small seam allowance. Put your pieces right sides together, lining up the two edges just at the very beginning but leaving about a quarter inch dog ear at the top. I do the concave one on top, but these are just the way I do it. There's no one right way. Um, so with about an eighth of an inch or a little bigger seam allowance, needle down is a big help in case you need to stop and reposition. And slow speed is vital in the beginning. So as you sew, you're watching here to try to keep a consistent seam allowance. Let the bottom one peek out just enough to keep track. And move both pieces gradually to keep those edges aligned as they pass the needle. I'm trying to keep a consistent seam allowance, but close is good enough. <clears throat> it's going to look a bit three-dimensional and wonky. You take it to a hot steam iron. I like to press from the back first and then press from the front. Always use steam on this step because you're trying to get it to lay as flat as possible, even though it's going to be wonky. Then you take the learning curve again with the curve down here this time and look for the two dots. In this case, it's dot one and two. Put the ruler so both dots sit right on the curved seam line. Trim two sides. There's no one right position. There's a little wiggle room there. Just find one where the, both dots sit on there. Now you can use dot line C to square up your unit. You'll get a perfect four and a half inch square. It'll finish at four inches because you're going to use a perfect quarter inch seam allowance on your straight seams. 
and when you do, all your curved seams will match up automatically. Now these obviously will match up, they're symmetrical, but what if you wanted to do it this way <clears throat> to do, um, let's say, a curvy border? It might look a little better if I take this one, there you go. They don't look like they're gonna match up, but they will. You put them right sides together, lining up the edges, sew your quarter inch seam allowance, and those curves match up automatically. Again, these are the units that are in the circle, the basic circle nine patch block, four of these in the side positions. <clears throat> and then you'll make this unit with either method four or five, depending on your project. And when you sew your nine patch together with quarter inch seams, all your seams will match up automatically. <clears throat> and this finishes at 12 inches, and these finish at four inches. So they work together very well with lots of other different units to create and design your own blocks. Have fun sewing curves and circles. It doesn't have to be scary.